have a very special author with us. Yes, many of you have read her books or her series of uh, I Survived. There's 25 million in copies that are out there, quite a few, and I have to say I'm glad she's not publishing out of her house because that would be a lot of ink and a lot of paper. That's right, I'm talking about none other than Lauren Tarshish. Welcome to the show, Lauren. How are you? Hi, Aaron. I am great. So happy to be with you. Thank you so much. No, thank you. Now, I Survived has been a huge success for you. I have to ask, the very first series that you did, what was that moment that you said, I think I have something that could continue forever? Well, that's such a great question, Aaron, because I really didn't think that it was going to continue forever. My, my inspiration for the series really grew out in many ways of the work that I've been doing at Scholastic as an editor in the Classroom Magazine's division there, where for years, really my, what I've been working on is taking really complicated events and making them comprehensible to kids so that teachers can, you know, can teach them in a, in a really engaging and clear way. And I noticed that whenever I wrote a story about a disaster or a historical event, if there was a child in the center of that story, those were the stories that teachers and kids were writing to me about. And I was actually really surprised that there wasn't already a book series for young readers that took these really complicated, really excited, exciting events with history and science and um, lots of background required that there wasn't already a series that took these and put a child in the middle of them. So that was really the idea for the I Survive series. And frankly, I thought I would do, you know, four of the books and then move on. It was a real surprise for me to find that kids were so engaged and kids at so many age levels, at so many reading levels. So it was really the kids and their interest and the teachers that have um, helped the series grow, that have inspired the new ideas and have help the series evolve from just natural disasters to these really big historical events like the American Revolution and the Civil War. Well, and let's talk about your latest one, because I, I, first of all, I would have appreciated you when I was young. I really would have, because for me, history was just one of those, like, why are we talking about right. this? I, I, you know, and I think a lot of kids, yeah, a lot of kids have that, unless you have a really yeah. great teacher. And then finally in seventh grade, I had a fantastic teacher who really brought it alive for us. And he helped us see it because he traveled to these places and gave us the behind the scenes of what we didn't even know. So it was like first person uh, format. Now the latest one that you have added to the series about I, it's, I survived the American Revolution, 1776. Why did you choose this particular story? Well, that is, first of all, going back to what you were saying, if you're so right, Erin, because, you know, that seventh grade teacher you had, what I discovered and what I always tell kids is that history is not facts and dates. History is really stories. It's stories of regular people like you or like me. You know, 50, 100 years from now, your story will be a thrilling historical story. So that was always, you know, that, that that's really what I try to do in the series is, is really not just give them the events or the dates, but to really take them into, as you said, behind the scenes and to tell these events through stories of kids that they can connect to. So the American Revolution was a topic that I've gotten so many requests for over the years from kids and, um, you know, right from the start. But the challenge for me was to try to make it accessible because I didn't really understand just how long and complex the American Revolution was. Right. It went on for eight years. And a lot of the really famous battles like Bunker Hill, a lot of the events like the Boston Tea Party, the Boston Massacre, those actually were before the official Revolutionary War started even. So I, every time I would say, okay, now it's the time to do the Revolutionary War book, and I would begin researching, I would become really daunted by thinking, how am I going to take all of this, the principles that led up to the idea of the revolution, the main players, George Washington, all of this, make it interesting, make it simple enough, um, wrap it in a plot that's going to be really suspenseful. So it was really, it was, it took, it's the 16th book in the series, I'm sorry, the 15th book. And okay. it took me all of those years to really, you know, finally say, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I figured out that I was going to focus on the summer of 1776, which was this incredible time when George Washington had just taken over as 
the head of the Continental Army, the American Army, the Declaration of Independence was signed. And then there was this huge, huge, bloody battle in, of all places, Brooklyn, New York. And that was actually the biggest battle of the entire Revolutionary War, one that I had never heard of and that most people I knew had never heard of. So I decided to sort of take a lot of these to try to um, build the story around this huge battle, but also weave in characters and events that kids would have heard of. So that's um, I, that's why really why I decided to do it. Well, and it's interesting because you are also kind of discovering things along the way. Right. What type, what did you discover about uh, George Washington that you perhaps didn't know before? Well, all of my friends know that I have a huge crush on George Washington. Now, all <laughs> of your your, uh, list, your your viewers will know this. Your listeners. Um, he was, what, what I learned about him, which was really, to me, very moving and inspiring, is that he was a failure. He failed so many times as a general during the Revolutionary War. And huh. there were so many times where people were just saying he should quit, he needs to be fired, he's a complete failure, he doesn't know how to be a general. Wow. He wrote sad letters to his wife Martha and to his, you know, to his confidants. And but he did not quit. And he and he wasn't an arrogant man. It wasn't like I'm not quitting. It was he sincerely believed in this cause. And he was he was always willing to admit the mistakes that he had made. He didn't blame other people. He didn't, you know, mm -hmm make excuses and what he did was he learned with every battle he would really study what went wrong he would pull forward those lessons and you can when you read about his life you see him becoming better and better and more confident and and um more experienced and really i believe it was those failures and learning from them that enabled him to succeed and for actually the entire revolutionary war to to um to go in favor of, of the Americans. You know, it's funny, uh, I, I, it's it's true, a lot of presidents don't like to talk about their failures or even admit to them, And but that's a sign of a true leader, and, uh, oh, yeah. and rightly so. Uh, now, let's talk about something really cool coming up in just a couple of days. There's a virtual addition to this. What's going on there? Well, we are actually taking kids and teachers or anyone to, on a virtual field trip. Um, it's a wonderful 25 minute video that will be online beginning on Wednesday. Anyone can watch it on the Scholastic website. And what we're doing is we, we are taking an incredible trip to the Museum of the American Revolution, which is a new museum in Philadelphia. And it's um, just, it's it, what's great about the revolution, this museum is that just like we were talking about earlier, they are really telling the story of the revolution through the stories of real people, including many young people who were there. And it's a wonderful museum with fabulous and cool objects that um, incredible exhibits where we meet historians. They are telling us about some of the, again, these sort of really young people who, who were there during that time. And we provide a lot of background. So, so the idea of the virtual field trip is to truly give kids a background about the revolution, to spark their curiosity, to help them understand the ideals that went into, you know, it went into this fight, um, the factors that helped the Americans win. They're going to see some really cool things. They're going to see things that people who go to the museum don't see. So it was a huge effort that Scholastic, you know, the team at Scholastic created with the Museum of the American Revolution, a real partnership. So um, it and and it launches on Wednesday, but teachers can use that anytime. You know, it'll it'll stay on the website, so it, it can be incorporated into their Revolutionary War curriculum or just a really fun you know activity that they can do during the school day. Well, what I've always loved uh, about you guys over there at Scholastic is I just I, I remember being a child and when they brought that I, I think it was like red and. It had little elements of like, you know, what you could get. I remember circling all the ones and then starting the ones that I wanted. It was like half the page of, or the, of the I think it was a four page at the time. And I, I remember taking it home and then my parents being like, uh, we can't get all of that. So just yeah. focus on the ones that you really, really want. I survived, obviously, a lot of kids are going, oh, the next one, the next installment. Now, you kind of leaked out. There was a little spoiler alert. You said 16th, even though this is the 15th. It looks like you're working on a 16th. 
Well, um, all right, believe it or not, I just happen to have a copy of the 16th here. Oh, there it is! Which is very, it's about, it's really a story of pioneers. It's about a, it's about a snowstorm called the Children's Blizzard, which was an iconic storm that happened in 1888, and it hit the entire northern Middle West. And it's called the Children's Blizzard because it trapped hundreds of children and their teachers in their one-room schoolhouses. And some of the most remarkable survival stories oh are of children and their teachers banding together. But really, it's more than the story of a storm. I have wanted to tell the story of pioneers, of what it took to settle in this harsh land of Dakota Territory, Minnesota, Nebraska, Iowa, all those areas in the late 1800s. So um, this was really one of my favorite research journeys of all. So this book is, I think it's out in the book fairs and the book clubs right now through Scholastic, but it'll be in stores at the end, I think February 25th. I, I can tell this totally excites you and what you do. Uh, is there ever like one, uh, first of all, I have to ask, how do you pick the, the times? Do you pick them or do they get suggested to you? Well, that's what's so great. Kids really do a lot of my hard work for me because I get tons of emails and letters from readers and they, so many of them are filled with suggestions. So I'm able to really grow the series and expand the range of the series with the guidance of, of the kids who are reading it. They're the ones who are telling me what they're interested in. They have amazing ideas. Sometimes it's really just getting a matter of getting a critical mass of, of, of suggestions of the same topic that guide me like the American Revolution. But I also get suggestions for topics that I would never really have thought of as appropriate for I Survive. And an example of that was I Survived the Eruption of Mount St. Helen, oh. which is the deadliest, you know, Amer um, volcanic eruption in America, and I was right. alive for it, but I never really considered it as the kind of, you know, history shaping event that in fact it was, and it was a reader, a high survived reader who suggested that to me. Well, I, I know these books are much like little babies, right? You got a bunch of them, they're little children, and it's hard to pick one over the other. Do you have a favorite one and a least favorite? One that you know you'd have to like, you really have to discipline that one. <laughs> Well, I know that's it's like, I'm sure you have our time choosing your favorite guests, Aaron. But, I do, um, and I don't. <laughs> I would say that um, my, I, I, you're right. I get really attached to all of the characters. They're historical fiction books, so I do a ton of research, but then I make up my characters, and the characters are generally inspired by real people that I discover in my research. So by the time I'm finished, I am very attached to those characters. But there was one book that was really special to me in terms of how it came about, and that's the one about the Joplin tornado. Um, that was about the EF5 tornado that hit the city of Joplin, Missouri in 2011. And the reason I wrote that book was because I got emails and letters from people from Joplin suggesting that I write about not only what happened to their city, it was a terrible you know, event, very destructive, it was the deadliest tornado strike in 100 years, in 50 years in America, but what they really wanted to, to, to share is how their, their city was rebuilt and how people banded together to, um, through their grief and through their healing process. And to me, it became a very iconic American experience, you know, that to, to share that. So I, I feel, you know, that I went to Joplin twice and, and I became very attached to that city. So the personal connection there, I think made it, makes it one that really stands out for me. And I don't have a least favorite. I always say that if I get to the point where I write a book and I think, eh, this one isn't so good, that will be the sign that I really shouldn't be writing it anymore. And, uh, oh, I, you know, that's good. That's good. Now, our social media audience, let's see, Mandy Lynn says, it's really awesome you're doing that for the kids. Nancy Knight just says, wow, combining this these tactics, tactics would grab the kids' interest. Bravo to you. Denise Gayette from the UK says, uh, I would love to get that book. I live here in the UK. How can we get a copy of that? How can people get copies of that? Well, luckily they are, you know, Scholastic does an amazing job of making them available. So you can really get them at any, you know, in America, you know, they're at, uh, you know, any bookstore, um, and in the UK, I'm not really sure. I do think, you know, they're available there and I do hear from readers there. So um, if she wants to, you know, message me, I can certainly, I can, I can help her find one across the ocean. Oh, look at that. Okay, so, and that's right. She is on Twitter as well. You could go tweet her over there. I'm following her, Lauren Tarshis. Uh, thank you so very much for spending time with us here on The Morning Show. And I have to ask, 
what is one that you've like had in the back of your head but you really want to do but it might take like longer time or maybe it's your 20th end of you know your 20th one do you have you planned that far in advance oh yes we are planning i mean i think i you know i'm working on one now it's actually about these this series of grizzly bear attacks that happened in Glacier National Park in 1967, and it's known as the Night of the Grizzlies. That's the one that I'm working on that will come out next fall. And then beyond that, I'm, I'm already planning my trip to France for this summer because I'll be writing about D-Day. Um, there's a big anniversary coming up. So I, I, you know, they are, you know, we have the next few planned. And in terms of a dream one that I'm hoping for, I just, I'm waiting for my readers to suggest um, what they're interested in, and that will be my path forward. All right. Well, I'm excited to see this. I'm excited. I can see this as a whole TV show or a movie series, the I Survive series, all done by you. I'm looking forward to that. I'm sure it's right, right around the corner. Thank you very much, Lauren, for Thank spending you, time. Thank you, Aaron. Great to be with you. Absolutely. We're going to take a break here on The Morning Show. Go check it out. You can also go to Scholastic. It's very simple. Go to Scholastic.com. And check out all the information. Check out that new virtual thing that they got going on. Go get her books, the I Survive series. I'm sure they're already like on eBay. You know, people will suck. Oh, we need to get a signed edition here. Okay, we're going to take a break. We're going to talk to Lauren. If you want to follow us on our behind the scenes, make sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter. Aaron M. Sanchez, Brett on Sports. We'll be right back right after this.